Yesterday, President Trump signed four executive orders, one of them being a $400 a week unemployment benefit, the other one being a payroll tax deferral program that could last through December. In this video, I'll break down these four executive orders, go over the details, as well as the pros and cons of each of them. But first, I wanna let you know that I'm an independent, I believe in values and principles with both Republicans and Democrats, therefore the information I'm presenting you is non-biased. Throughout the video, I'll give you quotes from both Republicans and Democrats, this way you get to see both sides and it's not a one-sided argument. To give some context of what led up to these four executive orders, there were 11 days of stimulus negotiations between the Republicans and Democrats to come up with an agreement on the next stimulus package. That did not happen, therefore President Trump took it into his own hands to pass these executive orders. Before we get into the four executive orders, here's what Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell for the Republicans said, struggling Americans need action now since Democrats have sabotaged backroom talks with absurd demands that would not help working people. I support President Trump exploring his options to get unemployment benefits and other relief to people who need them the most. Then Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer for the Democrats said, we're disappointed that instead of putting in the work to solve Americans' problems, the president instead chose to stay on his luxury golf course to announce unworkable, weak and narrow policy announcements to slash the unemployment benefits that millions desperately need and endanger senior citizen, or seniors, Social Security and Medicare. Let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. Are these four executive orders polarizing? Is it a Democrat thing, Republican thing, or is this mainly to help the American people? Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Now let's dive into these four executive orders. Three out of the four executive orders are considered memorandums, more or less the same thing. The first executive order is the $400 a week benefit. So President Trump says that I'm taking action to provide an additional or extra $400 a week and expanded benefits. $400, that's generous, but we want to take care of our people. Now, what this $400 a week is, is for the unemployment assistance, which expired in July, which was originally giving $600 per week. That's what the Democrats wanted in their stimulus package. Republicans wanted $200 a week. So $400 is kind of in the middle, but technically it is not a full $400, it's actually less, and this may only last a few weeks. I'll get into those details right now. So the federal government is actually gonna pay 300 out of the $400, then the other 25% the states are responsible for, or the extra $100. So federal government is gonna give $300. It's the state's responsibility to give that extra $100. The issue here is that many states have very low funding to begin with because of all the pandemic costs, also because of all the high cost of paying out their own unemployment assistance programs that are run by the states, they're saying that they may not have the $100 to pay on top of that $300. Now let's talk about where the money is coming from and how long can this $400 a week benefit last. So $44 billion from the Disaster Relief Fund would be made available for this lost wage assistance program. So the Disaster Relief Fund, a lot of experts are saying this may not be a good idea, especially since we're entering hurricane season. Extra week Weekly benefits could be available until December 6th or until the Disaster Relief Fund's balance drops to $25 billion. Experts are saying that this runway of time could be anywhere between five to eight weeks, depending on how many million Americans are on, unemployed assist are on unemployment. So if it's 20 million, it could be up to eight weeks. If it's 30 million, it could be up to five weeks. Next executive order or consider a memorandum is the payroll tax deferral system. So what this would do is it would defer the 6.2% for Social Security, 1.45% for Medicare, and this is only for workers who make less than $100,000 a year through the rest of 2020. So what does this mean? 6.2% plus 1.45% is 7.65%. What this means is for every $1,000 you get on your paycheck, you're going to receive an extra $76.50. Now this extra $76 you receive is not yours to keep. It's actually kind of like a loan because it's a payroll tax deferral system. This means that you're going to pay back this $76 for every $1,000 later on. But President Trump said that if he is reelected that he will make it permanent. Now, the big question here is, if no money is going towards Social Security, what will happen? If you weren't aware, payroll tax is the primary source of revenue for the Social Security program. So just last year, 944.5 billion 
which accounted for 89% of the one trillion collected for the social security program. Experts are saying that if money is reduced or cut completely to the social security program, then that could drastically negatively impact the entire social security program as a whole. And if the program itself is getting less money, then that means social security recipients will get less money as well. Another issue that people have with this payroll tax deferral program is that it is not benefiting the 20 to 30 million Americans who are unemployed and that are in most need. It also doesn't benefit our country's most vulnerable, like people on social security, like SSI, SSDI, veterans. This program does not help them either. It only benefits Americans who are working and receiving a steady paycheck. And there are Republicans who are against this payroll tax program. So Senator Ben Sass, Republican from Nebraska, he says the pen and phone theory of executive lawmaking is unconstitutional slop. President Obama did not have the power to unilaterally rewrite immigration law with DACA and President Trump does not have the power to unilaterally rewrite the payroll tax law under the Constitution, that power belongs to the American people acting through their member of Congress. I'm curious, what do you think about this payroll tax program? Is it good for the people because Americans are gonna get a higher paycheck or is it bad for the people because of the cost and all the other issues I pointed out? Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Also, if you appreciate the time, energy, and research that I wanted to make in this video, hit the like button down below so that YouTube will share this video with more people and subscribe to the channel if you want more updates like this. The next order is on eviction. So President Trump's orders instructs the Department of Housing and Urban Development, which is HUD, Department of Health and Human Services, and the Centers for Disease and Prevention to enable renters and homeowners to stay in their homes. HUD will also provide financial assistance and struggling and to struggling renters and homeowners. President Trump's order does not reauthorize the eviction moratorium under the CARES Act, which expired in July. It does not extend that same moratorium or freeze the eviction process. He's more or less instructing those departments I just said to not evict them and to help them with rental assistance. And the fourth executive action is the extension of student loan relief. So this action suspends federal student loan payments and sets the interest rates to 0% through December 31st, 2020. Under the CARES Act, the federal student loan borrowers had this moratorium expire September 30th, so now President Trump is letting it go a few more months until the end of 2020. With this executive action, it'll benefit around 35 million Americans who are borrowing the money federally, and there's around 8 million Americans who are borrowing money privately through private lenders. This does not affect the private uh, student loans at all. Those are the four executive actions by President Trump. You may have noticed that there is no stimulus check included in that. At this time, we do not know what is happening with the second stimulus check. It was supposed to be part of the bigger stimulus package that was going to be negotiated by the Republicans and the Democrats since they did not come to an agreement on that stimulus package, which included the stimulus check. At this point, we do not know what is happening with the second stimulus check. But as soon as I find out anything regarding a second stimulus check, I'll let you know as soon as possible. So subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. This way, it could give you those important updates. And if you're looking for a free money opportunity, if you sign up through Webull, you get one free stock. If you put $100 in the account, you get a second free stock. This is what it looks like, the free stocks that I've gotten. And if you want a third free stock, you could sign up through Robinhood. This is what it looks like when I get the free stocks there. And you could take these stocks, you could sell it, cash it out, put the money in your bank account, or keep it and let it appreciate it in value over time. And if you are currently in debt and want to get out of debt, there are two debt repayment strategies, the debt snowball and debt avalanche. I go over those two strategies in this video over here. So you could click that now. It's on my second channel, Wise Sense. Or if you want to watch more second stimulus check updates, you could click this playlist down over here and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, be safe. Thank you for watching.